What's good, YouTube? It's Gabe with Just Another Fan TV. Uh, back at you with another video. In today's video, we're going to talk about some overreactions to week one. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, John Harbaugh had a press conference today and he did announce that Kyle Fuller did, in fact, tear his ACL yesterday in today's, uh, in yesterday's game, sorry, versus the New York Jets, and that he's out for the season. Now, super unfortunate for the, uh, you know, the Baltimore kid, Kyle Fuller, you know, grew up here, went to Mount St. Joe, everything like that. Uh, made it to the NFL, and obviously one of his dreams was probably playing for the Ravens, and he never got a chance to play in the actual regular season home game for the Ravens. So, um, you know, hopefully he's on the team next year and he gets to, you know, accomplish that. But as of right now, Kyle Fuller is out for the season, and um, that's an unfortunate blow for him. So hope we wish him a speedy, speedy recovery. Um, on the Ravens side of things, they actually, this is actually one of the positions that they have depth at. They have guys who can cover that Brandon Stevens for a little bit. Marcus Peters will come back. They got two rookies in Pepe and um, excuse me, Pepe and uh, uh, Jalen Armour Davis. And also, you know, they got a Darius Washington who's still on their practice squad. So this is actually one of the positions where they have some depth at, but it's still unfortunate to lose Kyle Fuller, especially in the first game of the season. All right. So now we want to get into what this video is about. Um, if you like the content of this video, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, so we're going to do some week one overreactions, uh, three things on offense, three things on defense that... We're going to say for this one game and try to expand it to the whole season. Listen, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's why it's called an overreaction, so don't take it too seriously. But that's that's how we're going to do it, all right? First thing, we're going to start at the top. We're going to start with the quarterback, Lamar Jackson. I don't think Lamar Jackson is going to run the ball a lot this year. Uh, I know used to Lamar Jackson getting, you know, 900, 1,000 yards rushing. I think that without a contract, with the way everything went like that, He's only going to run when it absolutely calls for it. Hey, it's third down and short. Go get us a couple yards. Oh, we dropping back. Nobody's open. I'll scramble for a little bit of yards here and there. Like like that play that he made where I think it was like 38. A big, maybe two, three sacks on that play. Skips around a couple of defenders. We the ball off first down. We only going to see that a couple times a game, man. I don't think Lamar Jackson is going to run the ball a lot this year. Honestly, I don't. Now, that overreaction ties into the next one which is that this Ravens running game is going to have to really depend on running backs for the first time. And you and what does that mean, right? Well, basically, for a large part of Lamar Jackson's career, you could put anybody next to him and they were going to have an effective uh, season because defenses were scared of Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar Jackson is not going to run as much. That means we have a more traditional running game. And that could have actually affect the guys who are back there. Now, let's think about it. When they got used to the system, Devontae Murray was sorry, Devontae Freeman was going off. Latavius Murray was going off. We see Mark Ingram have a good year, had had a good year here, all right? For a large period of time, it didn't matter who was the running back next to Lamar Jackson. Um, they were going to get off just because of the threat of Lamar himself. All right. I don't think that's going to be the case this year. So with that being said, they're going to need JK Diamonds to be explosive this year. Because the running back who's actually in the backfield is going to actually matter a lot. Um, we saw that yesterday, man. Mike Davis didn't really get off. King and Drake didn't. King and Drake had maybe one or two runs. One of them was called back. And Justice Hill, they look as a pass catching back. So, he, you know, he's not going to do much in that. So, it's on J.K. Dobbins. It's on Gus Edwards. Two guys who are explosive running backs to really take that this running game to the next level, okay? Now, obviously, the offensive line, hopefully, we get better over time and have some better run blocking. But... It's going to be a lot on the, the backs of J.K. Dobbins on, on this run game, okay? And lastly, for offense at least, Devin DuVernay is the clear wide receiver three. He's the field stretcher. He's the guy that's going to replace Hollywood Brown, okay? Now, Devin DuVernay caught two touchdowns uh, last game. He made the first one especially was a really, really good play, going over top of the defender's head um, and coming down with the ball. Now, we love that. We love to see that. The second one, he was a little bit more open, but still had to go up and make a grab. Um, now, Devin DuVernay is a guy that's been here for a couple years. He's showing what he could do when he's not just relegated to doing jet sweeps out the backfield. He could actually play wide receiver. He's actually showing some moves. Um, so, we'll see if that continues. I'm hoping that it continues. Um, and my thing is that it will, right? Now, obviously, the old reaction could be the fact that wide receiver three on this team could not matter very much, right? Isaiah Lightly could technically be wide receiver three. We can see James Prochet get some more snaps, Tyler Wallace, whoever, right? But as of right now, it's Devin DuVernay's spot, and it's going to be his spot until he does something to lose it. So that's that's what I'm saying with Devin DuVernay. He's the guy that's replacing Hollywood. He's, he's going to stretch the field. Now, we know Big Man can do that as well, but I think this would be a more designed role for Devin DuVernay. All right, now, defensive side of the ball. 
the first one, this is the best Ravens defensive line that I can remember in some in recent years. All right. Um, and it's not just the fact like, like, like we've had pass rush duos. We've had one guy who was good, but we've never had, not never, I'm sorry. We haven't had a collective of guys like this in a long time. Michael Pierce, Havoc. Justin Matabike, Havoc. Uh, Justin Houston, causing Havoc off the edge. I saw Stephen Means, Roger Washington. The only guy I didn't really see getting on the action, which was surprising, was Odafe Owe. Uh, now, I'm looking for a bigger game from him next week, but if the Ravens can get this much pressure without Odafe Owe getting off, to me, that's a good sign because eventually I believe that Dr. West going to get it together and, you know, excel and really, um, you know, get some sacks, man. I think he could get double digits this year, 11, 12 sacks. Is, it should be uh, in reach for Adafi Owe this season, right? All right, so now the second one. Patrick Queen, Justin Matabike have taken the leap and they're ready to be star players on this defense. Now, Patrick Queen is the most, I'm not saying the most important one, but he's the one that I will talk about the most. Just because he was the Ravens middle linebacker of choice in 2020. Uh, if they took him in the first round, he was the guy that was supposed to be taking over this defense, right? Year one, tackling was a little sloppy. He made some plays, you know, scored a touchdown versus the Bengals, things like that. Uh, year two, he got better when he was given less responsibility. Um, but year three, we're here now, right? Uh, first game versus the Jets, what happens? He's making tackles. He's being consistent. I only see. I only saw him got beaten coverage one time with Michael Carter. Probably really should have caught that touchdown, and he dropped it at the goal line. But other than that, he was solid all over the field. There was one time he was guarding. He was he was covering Brees Hall at the backfield. Brees Hall catches the pass, pivots, and Queens right there to wrap him up. Last year, two years ago, I think that's a missed tackle. So I'm liking what I'm seeing for Patrick Queen. I saw him get back there on a sack. He was all over the field. And listen, this is the most important part right here. The Ravens had 84 defensive plays. Uh, Patrick Cream was on the field for all 84 plays. So he's now a three-down linebacker. He's now the guy in the middle of the defense. Josh Bynes only played, I think, 32 snaps. 32 compared to Queen playing 84. Okay? So that's big, huge news. And obviously, I mentioned Justin Matabike. Now, Matabike... Uh, we've been waiting for him to break out pretty much since he was drafted. All right. And first the Jesse showed that potential. Just need him to keep stacking on it. Um, I talked about him a little bit in the other video, so I'm not going to go into that to Matt BK. So I'm happy to see that from him. All right. And last one, we're going to talk about the $70 million man, Marcus Williams. My overreaction of Marcus Williams is that he's going to lead the NFL in interceptions this year, at least by safeties. Uh, he's a guy who has great instincts all over the ball, all around, uh, just good football player he had 12 tackles now usually you don't want your safeties having that many tackles that usually means maybe the you know deep passes happen or you know things like that you were gashed in the run game which are some things that did occur for the Ravens yesterday but he's showing that he's an all-around player with an all-around effort and that pick he caught natural hands it looked like Joe Flacco threw it right to him but he caught it easy snatched it and he almost scored on it so I'm going to say from just from looking at that pick Marcus Williams is going to go on lead in the NFL interceptions this year and that would be huge for the Baltimore Ravens. We haven't had a guy like that, obviously, since Ed Reed. But that's why so that's why it's the overreaction, right? So give me some of your overreactions to week one. Some things that, you know, you just want to throw out there. They may not happen, but you just want to throw it out there, all right? Uh, let me know. We'll talk about it in the comments, man. It's your boy Gabriel. This on the Fan TV. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'm out.